So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the U.S.-China Business Council, and the China General Chamber of Commerce, I'd like to welcome you all to our luncheon. I'd like to say a special welcome to Vice Premier Wong and his delegation, as well as to Secretary Mnuchin and Secretary Ross, and our many distinguished representatives from both countries. I'd also like to acknowledge our ambassadors for their hard work and significant contribution to our activities over many years. This high-level gathering reflects our shared understanding of the importance of the U.S.-China relationship, not just to our two countries, but to the entire world. We all believe in strengthening the U.S.-China relationship, and we know that a frank and constructive dialogue will help us do so. Ours is a relationship filled with commercial opportunities, but also challenges, both economic and geostrategic. Our meeting today comes at a very important time. We've reached the end of the 100-day action plan set forth by President Trump and President Xi in the summit at Mar-a-Lago. Thanks to many in attendance today, the 100 days yielded an early harvest of positive results for both sides. And we look forward to hearing about additional results in the coming days. But as we all know, much more needs to be done. We believe the, traditional, the tradition of openness of the U.S. economy to foreign investment and, the tr and trade has helped the U.S. create the most dynamic economy in the world. We believe such an approach would also highly beneficial, would be highly beneficial to China. The newly established elevated comprehensive economic dialogue co-led by Secretary Mnuchin and Ross and Vice Premier Wong is in charge and has a weight, a wonderful chance to chart a win-win path for both countries. By July the 16th, or but July the 16th, should not be the finish line. It should be a new starting point. We have some momentum, and now we need to build on it. The U.S.-China bilateral relationship needs solutions, not just in the months ahead, but for the years ahead. And the CED will be a critical part of that process. I ask you all now to join me in raising a glass to toast to the success of the inaugural comprehensive economic dialogue and to a stronger foundation and much success in the future. Salute. Thank you very much. We must do everything we can as we focus here to set a positive tone for our relationship going forward. And this luncheon gives us a chance to start. I would like now to introduce one of the co-leaders of the Comprehensive Economic Dialogue. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin did a tremendous job and put in a lot of effort during the 100-day action plan. He is now well equipped to help us write a productive new chapter in the U.S.-China relationship. Secretary Mnuchin is also a great friend to the American business community. He brings an important private sector perspective to the Treasury Department, and we happen to be very happy to have him. Secretary Mnuchin is right in the middle of not only our international relations, but also critical domestic policy debates like changing our tax code and our financial regulatory system. The business community stands ready to support his efforts, and I ask you to join me in welcoming him to the podium. <laughs> Good 
Good afternoon. I would like to thank the U.S.-China Business Council, the U.S. Chamber, and the China General Chamber for hosting this wonderful event for us and our distinguished guests. Vice Premier Wang, I want to warmly welcome you and your delegation to Washington. Secretary Ross and I look forward to our discussions as we work together to move the economic relationship between our two countries forward for the mutual prosperity of our people. I'm happy to see so many people here today who will work together to further that cooperation. We appreciate the opportunity to hear directly from the US-China business community about the challenges and opportunities you face, as well as your ideas to resolve them. We value your input, and it helps guide our agenda. This administration is focused on delivering trade and investment relationship that help US firms and workers. We want a level playing field so the bilateral trade and investment can be mutually beneficial, so we will work constructively with our Chinese counterparts to achieve this. As the world's two largest economies, the United States and China have strong overlapping interests and need to work together. Trade is an integral part of each of our economies, and we have a strong interest to ensure that there is continued support in both nations for our sustainable trade relationship. We have created the CED to address and resolve issues and have major impact on our bilateral economic relationship. Its purpose is to address challenges across bilateral economic relationship. With the CED, my hope is that we can increase our focus on concrete and targeted commitments to address both short-term and long-term strategic challenges. We have moved swiftly to establish the CED at our meetings of our presence at Mar-a-Lago in April. We have already announced commitments from China that will remove long-standing trade barriers to U.S. financial services and agricultural products, allowing these American business to participate in the world's fastest growing consumer market. The reopening of China's market to American beef is an example of the results-oriented approach this administration has taken in our engagement with China. We still have work to do with China to achieve a balanced relationship that is based on reciprocity. This relationship will provide more opportunities for us and for exporters and companies to compete. This means working to live foreign ownership restrictions so U.S. companies can participate more fully in China's growing financial services sector. It means working with China to resolve barriers to trade in its information and communications technology. Finally, it means a high standard of openness in communicating new and revised policies, regulations, and statistics that our companies can efficient business and efficient business decisions. The benefits of a U.S.-China relationship will be on expanding the Chinese market and continued Chinese growth in economic and financial stability. China is in the midst of important necessary transition in its economy to a more sustainable and market-based growth model based on household consumption rather than fixed exports. Let me now turn to our domestic economic program. My number one priority as Treasury Secretary is economic growth, and we are focused on getting back to sustainable 3% or higher GDP. One of the central components of this goal is comprehensive tax reform. It has been over three decades since we have tax reform in this country. This is too long and this administration is committed to changing this. On the business side, we have one of the most complicated systems in the world. We tax on worldwide income with our system of deferral. It is not surprising that trillions of dollars are left overseas. We want to bring back those profits with a lower business rate so that companies can invest in America. 
Finally, I want to address foreign investors in the audience. Last month, I spoke at the Select USA conference hosted by Secretary Ross to encourage foreign investment in the United States. Our country has a commitment to the rule of law and protection of private property. We are innovative and entrepreneurial society with one of the highest levels of labor productivity in the world. This is an incredible place to do business and with tax reform and regulatory relief, it will be even more so. So thank you all for being here. I'm looking forward to the work we can do together to strengthen the economies of both of our nations. Thank you, Secretary Monucci. On behalf of the China General Chamber of Commerce, it is my great honor to introduce Secretary Ross. We had the privilege to host Secretary Ross as a keynote speaker at our CGCC reception of the Select USC Summit in June. The sense of humor has left me with a heartfelt impression. Secretary Ross is a well-respected businessman with 55 years of investment banking and private equity experience. He has restructured more than $400 billion of assets in almost all industries, and he has served as chairman or lead director of over 100 companies operating in more than 20 different countries. Secretary Rose has deep understanding of the challenges that the businesses of all sizes faced in this competitive global market. We believe his expertise of restructuring fighter companies will be automatically transferred to his important role of growing and strengthening the American economy. We also look forward for his leadership to bring the economic ties between China and the US closer together. Now let's welcome Secretary Ross. Thank you for that very kind introduction. And thank you also to the US-China Business Council, the US Chamber of Commerce, and the China General Chamber of Commerce for hosting today's events. And especially would like to thank Tom Donahue. Now that I'm on such limited government pay, getting a free lunch every now and again is a very valuable supplement for me. I'm also delighted to be here with Secretary Mnuchin and Vice Premier Wang. During our previous meetings, I've discovered that the Vice Premier is a man of eloquence, wisdom, and wit. He also is a highly experienced and effective negotiator. That's why the US side has to have two people to try to work with Vice Premier Wang. I'm glad that we can all work together to benefit both the United States and China. Our two countries now represent more than one-third of global GDP. The U.S.-China trade and investment relationship is clearly about the most important one in the entire world. And that relationship has brought benefits to both nations. Many of the firms in this audience have prospered because of the strong U.S.-China relationship built over a long period of years. But there remain serious imbalances which we must work to rectify. China's exports to the U.S., as we all know, far exceed the exports of the U.S. to China, and the U.S. market has far fewer restrictions on Chinese investment than China has on US investment. These realities were logical when China's economy was smaller and when Chinese firms 
were much less competitive than they are today. But today, China is the second biggest economy in the world, its largest exporter, and accounts for nearly 50% of the U.S. trade deficit in goods. Chinese firms are globally competitive, and China is investing heavily in overseas markets, including the United States. Also, the trade surplus has created some money supply excesses in China. So this is not just a problem that one side wants to deal with. This is a problem that both sides would like to deal with. So therefore, it is time to rebalance our trade and investment relationship in a more fair, equitable, and reciprocal direction. Our presidents have struck up a strong friendship since their meeting at Mar-a-Lago. Through this new comprehensive economic dialogue, they have created a forum with the potential for resolving trade and economic issues. Trade discussions are normally denominated in years, not days. But together, we have made some concrete progress in a very short time. After just 40 days, as Secretary Mnuchin mentioned, we agreed to several mutually beneficial changes, including the resumption of U.S. beef shipments to China after a 14-year ban. American beef has already proven to be very popular with Chinese consumers. China's beef market currently exceeds two and a half billion dollars per year and is rapidly growing with current beef consumption per capita at only about one dollar and sixty cents. Though this is a good start, a lot of work remains. We now have begun to grapple with larger and more sensitive issues. So the dialogue itself is becoming more challenging. Our objective, however, will continue to be specific deliverables by specific dates so that everyone on both sides can measure the results on a continuing basis. Our working relationship is better today than it has been in many decades. Even though we may occasionally disagree on individual items, we have fundamentally shared objectives. So I am very hopeful about the opportunities for further success. Vice Premier Wang has traveled a long way with a large delegation of senior Chinese officials. And that shows how seriously he and his government are approaching this dialogue. I can assure you that the U.S. team is equally serious. So once again, I'm delighted to welcome the Vice Premier to the United States and look forward to his remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Ross, for those remarks. Good afternoon. My name is Evan Greenberg and I'm the chairman and CEO of Chubb Insurance Group. I'm also the chair of the U.S.-China Business Council. It is my pleasure and a distinct privilege to introduce our honoree, His Excellency Wang Yang, Vice Premier of the People's Republic of China. Wang Yang was appointed Vice Premier in March of 2013. Earlier in his career, the Vice Premier was mayor of Tongling and Nangui, as well as Provincial Party Secretary in Chongqing and Guangdong. Vice Premier Wang has extensive experience working at the national level, having served as Deputy Secretary General of the State Council, and has been a Politburo member since 2007. Vice Premier Wang has served as China's lead negotiator for U.S.-China bilateral economic relations since 2013 and is now leading China's delegation to the U.S.-China 
comprehensive economic dialogue, which was established by Presidents Trump and Xi and formally meets for the first time tomorrow. In a word, the Vice Premier is a highly experienced, capable leader and representative of his country. Mr. Vice Premier, the U.S. private sector is committed to strengthening U.S.-China commercial relations. As the two largest economies and a most important bilateral relationship in the world, we have a responsibility to foster mutually beneficial two-way trade and investment. Our economic relations not only have a bilateral impact, but a global one as well. Over the last several decades, the transformation of China's economy has been simply stunning. China's leaders are to be commended for the successful evolution of the world's now second largest economy. However, it is broadly recognized, both inside and outside China, that economic reforms are necessary if China is to meet the growth and prosperity objectives. As China continues to rebalance from an export and manufacturing-led economy to a more technologically advanced consumer and services-based economy, greater opening of the market to foreign participation is in our mutual interest. The U.S. private sector has significant capabilities and know-how in many areas that can contribute to the Chinese economy and people. With the removal of existing barriers to trade and investment, we'll be able to bring increased American ingenuity through our products and services to the Chinese people, just as Americans will continue to benefit from Chinese products and investment. The U.S. private sector strongly supports a results-oriented process of engagement by our two governments, though the, through the comprehensive economic dialogue. There are serious issues to be addressed that will require your leadership, Mr. Vice Premier, as well as those of Secretaries Ross and Mnuchin. The ultimate goal should be a commercial relationship that is mutually beneficial, fair, and reciprocal, with the balance of opportunities afforded to each side to pursue our comparative advantages in both trade and investment. By doing so, our commercial relationship will remain an enduring source of stability in the overall U.S.-China relations in the years ahead. Mr. Vice Premier, we now look forward to your remarks. Zhenjing 最近五年我已经六次来美国虽然可能还要讲一些老话我在工商界的欢迎午宴上说
，许多人当时都忧心忡忡，认为中美经贸关系即将进入寒冬，甚至存在着贸易战的风险。在关键的时刻，习近平主席果断的应邀访美。与特朗普总统在海湖庄园举行了历史性的会晤，为新时期中美关系的关系奠定了建设性的基调。双方决定建立全面经济对话等四个高级别对话机制，启动中美经济合作的北日计划。经过双方的艰苦努力，北日计划已经取得了。重要成果。美国牛肉时隔十四年重返中国市场，美国的液化天然气输化政策的障碍开始破冰。我告诉大家，今年的前五个月，中国自美进口天然气已经达到了四十万吨，而去年同期为零。更为重要的是，通过一百天的密集接触，双方经济团队建立了互信，初步摸索出相互尊重、合作共赢的沟通方式。我相信你们刚才从罗斯部长对我的夸奖中间，已经可以感受到这一点。也许大家要问，为什么会这样？其实答案就在这儿，就归功于你们。我去年就说过，中美经济、中美经贸合作是市场行为，根本的动力在民间，在工商界。美方做出上述的选择，就是工商界主流民意的反应。正是因为你们长期支持并积极参与中美的经贸合作，创造了要合作不要对抗的氛围，才促成了中美经济关系今天的局面。虽然未来两国合作过程中还可能出现波折，但只要你们有信心。中美经贸关系大的方向就不会改变。由此，我要说出第一个结论：合作是两国唯一正确的选择。中美经贸关系这艘大船正行驶在正确的航道上。女士们、先生们，中美两国的合作不是从今天。开始的，远的不说，仅从二零一二年中共十八大以来，中美战略与经济对话商贸联委会的情况来看，许多领域的合作都富有成果。在过去的对话中，中方承诺调整经济结构，改变。主要依靠投资和出口拉动经济增长的方式。二零一三年，中国最终消费对经济增长的贡献率只有百分之四十七，今年一季度已经提高到了百分之七十七，而服务业。占国内生产总值的比重已经从二零一三年的百分之四十六点七，增加到今年一季度的百分之五十六点五。经常项目顺差与国内生产总值的比例，更是从二零零七年的百分之十的峰值，下降到今年一季度的百分之零点七。中方承诺放宽市场准入，扩大服务业开放。近年来，中方多次主动修订外商投资产业指导目录，目前限制性措施只有六十三条，比二零一一年版缩减了一百一十七条，降幅高达百分之六十五。
近期，两家美国金融机构分别获得中国银行间债券市场的承销牌照和结算代理人的业务资格，就是金融业扩大开放的结果，当然也是百日计划的成果。在上海等十一个自贸试验区，开放的领域更广，程度更深。其实。在中美投资协定谈判中，中方已经同意在银行、证券、保险、电信、文化、互联网、汽车等领域进一步扩大开放。中方也承诺加大节能减排的力度，共同应对全球气候变化。二零一二年。到二零一六年，中国单位国内生产总值二氧化碳下的排放下降了百分之二十二点五。去年可再生能源的装机容量已经占全球总量的百分之二十四，新增装机占全球增量的百分之四十二。中方还承诺。加强知识产权保护。二零一三年以来，中国政府共开展一百七十余次打击侵权假冒的专项行动，累计查办违法犯罪案件一百三十万件，近十万人被判刑。二零一四年，在北京、上海、广州设立了专门的知识产权法院。现在已经累计审理案件近四万件。需要强调的是，中国兑现这些承诺，是为了自身发展进步做出的主动选择，符合“十三亿”中国人民的利益，也契合美方的诉求。当然，合作从来是双行道，是互惠互利的。我们也希望美方能够解决好中方的关切，从而实现双赢。应该看到，中国仍然是发展中国家，建立市场经济体制才二十多年，市场的开放程度、创办企业的便利度等各个方面，还没有达到工商界的期望。我知道。在座的诸位，你们还有许多不满意之处，这正是中国前进的动力。其实，我们也在审视自己的不足，并坚持以问题为导向，加以改进。留心中国新闻的人可能会注意到，昨天。习近平主席主持召开了中央财经领导小组的会议，研究了进一步扩大开放的具体方向和相关领域。对于改革开放，我们的目标是明确的，路径是清晰的，步伐是坚定的。虽然有时走得不那么快。但假以时日，就会取得令人刮目相看的成就。就像一个成长中的孩子，你每天看他，察觉不到变化，但几年一过，猛然就会发现他已经长大成人。回首中国近四十年改革开放的历程，不正是如此吗？由此，我要说出第二个结论：中国的发展进步具有长期的确定性，这是各国企业与中国合作最重要的外部环境。女士们、先生们，经过近四十年的快速发展，中国经济的块头大了，个子高了，但还不够结实、强壮，总体上仍然处在。国际产业链的中低端，与美国还有较大的差距。中美经济有竞争的一面，但互补性远大于竞争性
，双方合作的空间现在不是缩小了，而是扩大了。因为中国经济仍然保持中高速增长，正在向中高端迈进，传统产业加快转型升级，新兴产业蓬勃兴起，美国各类先进技术、关键设备、重要零部件，对华出口潜力巨大。但遗憾的是，美方。受美方陈旧的出口管制法规政策的影响，美国企业没有获得应有的蛋糕。二零零一年，美国对华高技术产品出口占中国同类产品进口的百分之十六点七，去年这一比重下降到百分之八点二。以集成电路为例，去年中国进口总额高达二千二百七十亿美元，超过进口原油、铁矿砂、戳击塑料三种大宗商品的总额，但美国其中只占了百分之四的份额。根据美国卡耐基和平国际和平基金会今年四月的报告。如果美国对华出口管制降至对巴西的水平，美国对华贸易逆差最多可以缩减百分之二十四；如果降至对法国的水平，最多可以缩减百分之三十四。中国的中等收入人群已经达到三亿，居民消费结构正在从温饱。满足温饱，向追求品质转变；从线下消费向线，从线下消费向线上消费转变。去年，美国高品质商品和优质服务啊，这个需求在中国是与日俱增。去年，中国访美游客约三百万人次，人均花费超过一点一万美元。为美国创造了十五万个就业岗位。目前，中国网络购物的用户超过四点六亿人。美国的车厘子、龙虾、海蟹、坚果、保健品等热销产品，七十二小时就可以送达中国的千家万户。去年，对华的跨境出口增长了百分之百。上个月，阿里巴巴集团在底特律举办美国中小企业论坛，吸引了三千多家美国的中小企业参加。他们都迫切希望搭上互联网的快车，进军中国广阔的消费市场。美中贸委会预计，未来十年，中国啊，未来十年，美国对华贸易。呃，货物贸易和服务贸易出口将翻一番，达到三千六百九十亿美元，到二零五零年将增至五千二百亿美元。相信任何一个有远见的企业都会重视这样巨大的市场，任何一个有作为的政府都会重视与中国的合作。由此，我要说出第三个结论。中国市场的成长性不可限量，中美经贸合作前景可期。女士们、先生们，经贸合作是利益的交换，不可避免的会存在这样那样的分歧。中美产业界都希望本国政府。拆除阻碍市场开放的壁垒，又都希望本国政府筑牢抵御外国商品进入的围墙。我理我们理解，美国不少人支持雇美国人买美国货，因为中国也有人主张买中国货，用中国人。但双方都应该清醒地认识到，在两国经贸合作深度交融的今天。
中国人不可能不买美国货，美国人也离不开中国货。我们都希望看到两国经贸关系强劲、平衡、健康的发展。首轮中美全面经济对话明天就要开幕了，中方愿与美方向下而行，找到利己及人、互利共赢的解决方案，达成最好的交易。我的两位对话伙伴都曾经是商业精英，深谙交易的艺术。相信与他们的对话过程会十分艰苦，希望结果会令人鼓舞。谢谢大家。Thank you, Mr. Vice Premier, for those remarks, and now everybody enjoy your lunch. <laughs>